This review is brought to you in part by Riders Hobby Shops, where the fun begins. Stop in to one of Riders' two convenient Michigan locations, where you'll find a full range of the latest hobby products, supplies, parts, tools, and paint. Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Street Fighter by Tom Daniel. It's a 124 scale monogram kit, model number 85-4262 as it's uh, released in this version, and it's a skill level 2 kit for the intermediate builder. The pieces are molded in orange, chrome, transparent red styrene, and black vinyl tires with some water slide decals. There's 72 pieces to this kit, and there's some nice instructions to go along with that. It's a reissue of the 1970 Street Fighter, designed by Tom, and you know, I remember when I was uh, back in the day, these station wagons were about as far away from cool as you could get unless somebody made them into street racers and hot rodded them. So when that was done, they were really cool. And uh, this kit has the cool factor going for it. It's a 2014 re-release, and it has all the original kit's features, and you can still find these easily online and at auction sites. Now, altogether, there were four different versions of the kit. And we could um, give you a little insight into the rest of those by doing some comparisons. And so we'll be able to do that along the way uh, as we've built uh, some of the other versions. So uh, take, a, take a close look and uh, we'll show you how this one's built. So here are the contents of this kit, and as you can see, the major parts are all individually bagged to keep from scuffing uh, the glass and the plastic. Even the tires are in their own poly bag. Uh, and the uh, decals, although minimal, have a good registry, and they really add to the appeal of this kit. Now we'll be using uh, liquid cement for most of the construction. Occasionally some super glue for fragile parts and white glue for uh, things like window glass. But always remember to follow the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products that you see or hear mentioned in the review. When you're finished with this kit, she'll be about uh, eight and a half inches long, two and a quarter inches wide, and uh, two and a half inches high. Looking at some of the pieces, uh, we find that uh, trademarks uh, and some of the script work here for the copyrights and uh, logos uh, indicate the 2009 release, which this essentially is. Uh, they merely reboxed it in uh, 2014. And um, thanks to them, because that keeps the price down on these iconic kits. But what we're going to have to do uh, is uh, remove those scripts by uh, scraping off uh, you know, the script work there and sanding them smooth if you want a nice clean look. Construction starts with the engine on this kit and um, gather these parts as you see here and both the air cleaners uh, had their sides uh, painted with a flat white to uh, simulate paper filters and then the uh, left and right engine halves and both the cylinder heads are painted uh, gloss red and assembled and the fan belt and the uh, exhaust headers are painted with some flat black. After the engine block is dried the two air cleaners are attached to the intake manifold along with the oil filler tube and then the left and right engine halves uh, and both of the cylinder heads are attached uh, to the engine assembly. Next thing is to uh, place the uh, rocker covers in, into position on the cylinder heads and then the intake manifold is glued to the engine assembly. The alternator gets glued to the fan belt and then that fan belt assembly is glued to the front of the engine. The uh, exhaust headers then are attached to the engine assembly. As promised, here's some comparisons. Um, the engine we just completed for the Street Fighter is uh, marked A here in the picture. And Street Fighter 2's engine is uh, B, and the Bad Actor's um, engine is um, item C here. Um, all closely resembling each other, uh, just coloration and uh, appointments that are a little bit different. We find the same is true for the um, chassis pan here. Um, uh, a is the Street Fighter, and B uh, is Street Fighter 2, a bad actor is C. The Street Fighter has a tire well there in the center and a section for fuel tanks in the bed, uh, but the other two do not. So grab the uh, chassis pan frame out of the kit there along with these uh, tenant pieces and uh, both hood hinges. And then uh, they're painted uh, with a gloss orange and then um, the battery gets painted flat black. 
I painted the uh, bed section back there a, a semi-gloss black and then the hood hinges uh, they get glued to the back side of the front pan trapping the hinge piece onto the frame and then install the uh, engine assembly into its position it goes right in there and it's a positive location uh, remember though whenever you're putting uh, chrome pieces or even painted pieces together uh, make sure you scrape off those uh, platings or paint uh, to get a good bond with uh, the glue so grab these uh, attendant pieces uh, the suspension rods etc and the cover there and then the tie rod and the traction bars and the steering link as well as the two radius rods are painted with chrome color and then the cover uh, gets airbrushed uh, or sprayed with uh, a gloss orange next the front axle is painted with some semi-gloss black the um, tire cover gets glued to the bottom of the frame where the uh, spare tire is and uh, that of course is seen on the top side in the bed there and then the traction bars get glued to the frame and they hold the rear axle now the steering link is glued to the front axle along with the tie rod and then the front axle assembly can be attached to the frame the radius rods are attached to the front axle and the left and right sides of the frame assembly so grab the suspension and exhaust out of the kit there and then we're going to paint the um, the small exhaust collectors uh, silver and then the rear axle assembly and both rear shocks get painted um, semi-gloss black now an exhaust connector then uh, is secured to the right one uh, and then the right pipe is attached to the connector and the frame there uh, where they locate and then uh, the second one is secured to the left side of the header and then a left side pipe is attached to its connector and also the frame on that side. Go ahead and locate these parts from the kit uh, box and uh, we're going to work with some of the interior and under hood parts here. So the interior gets painted uh, semi-gloss black and then the roll bar and the shift lever uh, have some detailing on them that gets uh, a little semi-gloss black treatment. Um, like the boot there as you see and the radiator wall is painted uh, flat black and, and semi-gloss black and there's a decal number four that can be applied uh, onto the interior before the shift lever can be installed uh, into the interior there that's console and then the uh, interior is attached to the frame assembly the roll bar is glued to the frame and then the supports are attached to the roll bar and the frame next the gas caps are glued to the bullet gas tank and then that assembly is glued to the frame assembly now the shroud fan uh, or the fan shroud I should say is secured to the radiator wall before the radiator wall assembly can then be put into place on the frame paint the radiator hose uh, and then uh, flat black and once it's dried install that to the engine and the radiator assembly and here's the uh, rear quarter view of the frame assembly which can be seen after you assemble that uh, to the main body pan there. So grab these pieces and paint the uh, column mast jacket there a flat black and the um, the wheel is a semi-gloss black and the drag link is painted a silver color. So take a note of the black arrow there but we'll talk about that in a minute. First the steering column gets installed into the interior and the drag link is attached to the column and the steering link. Now the steering wheel gets attached to the steering column mast jacket and care should be taken to make sure that all the parts are dry before going on to the next star, a step or the parts can separate. Uh, when I was doing this the radiator wall came off the frame assembly while positioning the car for the, these photos. So I noticed that and just left it that way for a moment uh, because the glue was still uh, tacky uh, and I left the picture this way to show you that these things can happen. Um, but that's okay. Um, go ahead and uh, uh, repair the damage if necessary and move on. So here you can see just to the left of the center console uh, which was that decal we talked about uh, is the steering wheel and the column uh, protruding through the firewall there. So that's how uh, that looks once it's in position. Now grab the front and rear uh, tires and wheels. Now of course uh, the rear tires are much bigger so uh, don't get the parts mixed up including the wheels. Uh, and the front inner wheels and the rears, uh, they get painted flat black and then the inner wheels are installed into the tires with a little rim of glue uh, around the outside edge. But uh, once again, uh, scrape off a little plating in order to get a good bond. And then uh, they're installed, like I said, in, and the front tires uh, are glued onto the inner wheels. And then the 
Uh, rear wheels are installed into the drag slicks and the outer wheels are installed onto the drag stick slicks as well and glued to the inner wheels in the back uh, just like the fronts. Now the front wheel assemblies can be uh, added to the front axle and the rear wheel assemblies likewise on the spindles for the rear axle and at that point we have what we call a rolling chassis on which to build the rest of the model. So this um, this photo shows the comparison again to the other versions. In this case uh, we've moved uh, the uh, Street Fighter to B. You can see the snorkels uh, are uh, tanks, gas tanks in the back there. And A is the bad actor and C is Street Fighter 2. Now um, the, sleet, the seat belt decals on the Street Fighter 2 and the console gauges on the original Street Fighter uh, to me were the best. So it'd be nice if those were combined uh, but um, those came in different kits. So here's a comparison of those features. Also note that the Street Fighter has uh, drag slicks. Uh, however, the other two versions, the Bad Actor and Street Fighter 2, have regular wide tread tires. Again, um, we'll show you some differences. Here are the dashboards. Uh, and uh, the Street Fighter 2 is A in this photo. And the Bad Actor is B. The original Street Fighter uh, is C. And um, between these two kits, um, I like the decal for the TAC uh, for the Street Fighter 2. And then the decal for the dashboard on the Street Fighter. So uh, together they'd look great. <laughs> now we'll uh, return to construction with uh, our kit here. And the body, the rear pan, the dashboard, they all get painted with the uh, gloss orange. And then the windows, which are really great here, they're translucent red uh, for viewing the interior. They, um, they get glued into the body with some either some clear part cement or some white glue. And um, then number three decal is applied to the dashboard and then the tack is glued to the dash. Then the uh, whole assembly gets installed into the body with some clear part cement. Now the rear uh, pan gets glued to the body assembly and the tail light panel is glued to the rear pan and the body assembly with some clear part cement or white glue. When the um, windows have dried thoroughly, uh, go ahead and install the uh, body to the frame assembly. Uh, just uh, It's a pretty easy installation. Locate the uh, contact points and put a little glue there and go ahead and uh, gently put that in position and into place on top of the frame. As you can see here, uh, the sunroofs and moonroofs were altered between the versions. Um, the Street Fighter A uh, has uh, the big uh, the big sunroof and the uh, or moonroof, and the Bad Actor and the Street Fighter II um, have uh, have the sunroofs installed there. So um, there was a difference between the three body styles. So uh, moving on here, the uh, the hood was painted with the gloss orange and then the front spoilers get painted uh, some silver coloration and so grab these parts for the next stage. Now we're going to do a little of the front end work and uh, I had a little trouble uh, with the um, front pan. It didn't really uh, line up with the hood pin so uh, first we're going to glue the hood there but I would use some um, super glue to make sure that that uh, is put into position exactly where you want it so it will line up correctly. Uh, and this uh, seems to be a problem with the other two versions because they had the same issue. So obviously uh, from the original molds nothing changed. Now the two front spoilers get uh, glued to the hood assembly and then the headlights are installed using some clear part cement or, or white glue and the grill assembly can be installed into the hood assembly. With the basic construction completed, it's time to add those great looking decals to the side body uh, and then they, uh, if you want to, there's a plate uh, that can be added to the back end. But um, th This is what made the, uh, the station wagon cool back then was uh, putting a great big set of tires and jacking up the rear end. And uh, this uh, kit is a really pretty easy to build. There's just a little bit of that hood fit issue there with the hinges lining up. Um, so pay attention to that and the rest will go together very easily. And what a head turner. Uh, if I were you, I'd buy one of these kits and put it on my shelf. We hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can find us on Facebook and at our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.